Guys, before I take you out on an adventure today, I just want to say a massive thank you to our friends at Lancaster Insurance. They are supporting us not only to go on Miners on Tour, but to adventure around the UK and beyond for a whole year. So I cannot wait to take you on loads of different adventures in Mary and show you lots of different exciting places that we're heading off to. If you haven't heard of Lancaster before, they're a UK classic car insurance specialist and we're going to be supplying them with exclusive content throughout this adventure and beyond so make sure you give them a follow I've popped the link to their Instagram in my bio and also to their website as well because it's definitely worth checking them out if you need to insure your classic car so stay tuned because we're about to go on a very exciting adventure in a very special little car called Mary Hi guys, it's Steph from My Driver Classic and today my adventure begins weirdly in my house because I'm going to give you a bit of an overview of what we're doing today. So in today's video we're going over to Alton Park for the Alton Park Gold Cup which is essentially car racing with classic car racing and um, my friend Joe, his brother is racing, Mike, and we're heading off over to watch him race. Now I got invited, I've not been before, I don't know what to expect so in today's video I'm going to try and give you a bit of an overview of what's going on, what we're seeing and hopefully persuade some of you that have maybe not been to the event before whether you want to add it to your diary or not. So let's head off because we're jumping in Mary. Like all good adventures on iDriver Classic, we're going out in a classic car ourselves and we're back in Mary, the Morris Miner. So you'll have seen her go on plenty of adventures with us and today she's going over to Alton Park Gold Cup with us. And I've got a few people with me. I've got Joe, um, primary driver of Mary. And um, I've also got my friend Stacey. She's just in the back here. So we're very excited and we're gonna carry on our journey over the Pennines and get across to Alton Park. Um, we're running a bit late now I've never been to anything like this before so I wasn't sure what to expect um, Joe had invited me to come and watch his brother race in the pre-66 touring cars so I didn't know if it's gonna be a one-off and I certainly didn't expect to walk in and pretty much straight away start seeing classic cars racing around and I was most pleased when I spotted this Metro oh have a look at this this amazing 6R4 you can even hear me in the background going oh my god it's a Metro honestly Probably one of the highlights of my day, that 6R4. Just incredible to see it on the track. Now, before we rush off and watch the racing, let's have a look at what Joe's brother Mike is going to be racing in today. This absolutely incredible Ford Anglia. So, to give you a quick peek under the bonnet so you can see what's going on. And uh, we're going to be watching Mike out on the track today, but we've popped in. And um, as you can see, Mike and his dad Andy are get, just getting the car ready, just checking everything over, sorting out any last touches um, before it gets onto the track. So, exciting stuff and uh, a bit of a preview for what we're going to be seeing later on in the video. I thought I'd take you for a walk around the pit and this is kind of almost you know in layman's terms the backstage area where everybody's getting the cars ready for the races so um, we've had a look at Mike's car so I thought I'd choose some of the other cars that will be racing today. Now they will be racing um, this particular car some of the other cars are going to be racing in the pre-66 saloon cars so as we have a look around you'll spot some of the cars now that we'll see later on racing and um, one of the things that I found really fascinating that I didn't know um, before I had a chat with Joe's brother is that they race on cross plies and that's because the cars have to remain in a similar state to how they were raced at you know at the time um, but with the inclusion of kind of the safety features that bring it into 2019 things such as a roll cage and a plumbed in fire extinguisher system and of course the racers all have to wear kit themselves they've got to wear the fireproof thermals the gloves the helmet you know all the kit um, so as we look around there's so much going on and some of these cars look absolutely incredible and um, I should probably mention as well that for those of you that like a little bit of detail the cross plies that Mike's racing on today are Dunlop CR65. Now as we have a look around the cars um, I know I'm going to keep mentioning it today but it's exciting because we're here today and it's 60 years of the Mini, so there's an awful lot of Minis, but um, weirdly there's also a lot of Ford Anglers as well. So take a good look at this car. Um, because it's, uh, it's quite fast actually, which you'll see as we go through. I'm not going to put in any spoilers, but yeah, there's some amazing cars here. Um, so I thought I'd just have a little waffle to you as we walk around and have a look. Um, 
and it's incredible really because if you think about it it's not just you build a car you turn up and you bring it you have to pay to enter you have to pay for all the kit so it's not just the emotional investment of people putting these cars together there is a significant cost involved in entering your car to race building your car and of course you know repairing it if you have an accident um which cars do have accidents in fact um there was an accident today um unfortunately with a mini which um we'll talk about later on but yes lots of exciting cars here lots to see and um i'm excited actually to show you some of these cars on the racetrack because they don't just look incredible but they sound incredible too we've headed down to the track and we're getting settled in and ready to watch Mike race. So the cars go around the track um, to warm up the tyres. So we're just watching them now go around the track and um, and then the race will begin. So we're cheering on Mike today in his Ford Anglia, uh, but there's lots of other interesting cars here as well. And as we watch the race, I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised by some of these cars. The minis sound absolutely nuts. So we're all settled in and we're ready to go. And um, I'm gonna show you some of the race footage, not necessarily necessarily going to talk over it so that you could enjoy hearing the cars and uh, hearing how we heard it now usually I would just incessantly talk over all the sections but I've decided I'm going to let you watch some of this race footage in peace because I want you to get a bit of a feel for what it was like for us watching and um, hopefully to convert you to come along to something else like this because honestly it's been such a day the atmosphere has been incredible so I'm going to kind of just talk to you at little points throughout but pretty much by and large I'm going to let you watch the footage and enjoy it how we enjoyed it over at Alton Park because honestly it's been incredible.
Now, unfortunately, the white Mini and the Mustang had an accident, and uh, so they've been taken off the track. So, for safety reasons, they slow everybody down to I think it's 30, it's either 30 kilometers or 30 miles an hour, um, just so they've got everything cleared off. So, they put up a yellow flag first of all, and then they put up a red flag, and then they restarted the race. Now we'll catch up with Mike later on after the racing, but let's go and have a look at some of the other things here at Alton Park today. We also did some non-car stuff too, and we went for a ride on this uh, TT Isle of Man experience, which was absolutely bonkers. So actually, this was quite funny because all four of us, so we've got Oscar as well, uh, we pretty much just got thrown around in this giant metal box and um, it was pretty hilarious actually. It was well worth the four quid that we paid. And um, it was just one of those things. I think people think that car shows and things that we do like this can be a bit boring and staid when actually there's quite a lot going on and they're actually quite funny. Right, let's go and have a look at some classic cars because uh, there's an awful lot here and I think it's high time I showed you some of the unusual stuff. And it wasn't just racing and um, somewhere to eat. There were also classic cars on display. And I'm going to make a small confession. I came round to have a look at the classic cars pretty much towards the end of the day. Because... I've been to classic car shows before and I'd never been to racing before and I wanted to show you guys what it was like and show you some of the different elements and just have a really fun day. So I thought I'd walk around the cars at the end and show you some of my favourites. But as you can see, even towards the end of the day, there was still an immense amount of cars on display. And so there were lots of different things from your run in the mill, like your Morris Miners and your Minis, through to uh, some really special stuff as well. So I'm going to show you some of my favourite stuff today, including some of my favourite Minis because Today marks 60 years, well, on the dot, 60 years of the Mini. So it would seem... Uh it would seem a wasted opportunity if I didn't show some of my favourites today as well, including a very special Mini. So as you can see, lots of different cars here, lots going on, but I'm going to show you some of my favourite cars because there are so many to choose from and it's very hard. It sounds a bit like a problem that I shouldn't really complain about, but there are so many cars here today that deserve to be in this video, that deserve to be shown to you guys, but at the end of the day, it's not a car show and I didn't want to just make it all about the cars here. So what I tried to do is try to pick out some of the interesting stuff and I saw these sards and I, there I was marching out the field straight away to have a look at them because I actually saw one of these in the wild um, in Sussex when I went down to film the um, the Snuggie and I was very excited, tried to follow it and it left me behind, um, which is the first time for ages actually in a metro. So now that I'm with the Saab Owners Club, I wanted to talk to you a little about these amazing cars, these Saab 96s. So they were made for a solid 20 years through from 1960 to 1980 and were introduced to replace the Saab 93. And it was a stylish aerodynamic two-door car with, at first, a two-stroke three-cylinder engine and it was later replaced with a more practical four-stroke V4. And seeing as we're at Alton Park, I thought I'd give you a little Saab 96 motorsport fact. So it was most famously driven by Eric Carlson in many international rallies and his most famous successes were in the 1960, 61 and 62 RAC rallies and first in the 62 and came and in the 1963 Monte Carlo rally and it was these kind of big top level victories that put the Saab 96 on the map and established its reputation for well being both reliable and pretty tough as well and as you can see by looking at these cars they've certainly survived and look fabulous. In the spirit of showing you some exciting stuff here and maybe stuff that, just like me, you haven't really seen before, this is an Alpine A310. Now they were made between 1971 and 1985. And uh, if you're wondering why it's part of the Renault Owners Club, let me explain. So Alpine was originally an independent company which specialised in faster Renaults and was later a subsidiary of Renault, which 
is why it's parked here. Now the car was launched at the Geneva Motor Show um, in 1971 and the early cars were seen as very labour intensive because they took 130 hours to build, start to finish. Now, and seeing as we're at Alton Park today, here's a motorsport fact for you. The A310 had great success in French motorsport as a Group 4 car, and in 1977, Guy Frequenla, apologies on the pronunciation there if I'm not quite right, um, raced an Alpine Renault A310 V6 and won the French Rally Championship. Now, in my opinion, this is probably one of the coolest cars here today. It certainly doesn't look like it was made in 1980. It looks so futuristic and it's definitely caught my eye today. It's 60 years of the Mini today, so let's have a look at some of the Minis on display, starting with this amazing Citroen Clubman from the 70s. So, this is the first time this car has ever left Cumbria, so you may never have seen it before. Now, it sold new in Carlisle from a BL dealership called Apple Yards, and the first owner was called Mr Holt, who lived in Penrith, and then it was owned by a lady who lived in Kirkby Stephen, and she had the car for a while, failed its MOT, the MOT tester bought it, and and um, the current owner got it from the MOT tester 15 years later and um, it done 29,000 miles when the current owner acquired it and um, Dan who owns the car now restored it with um, his dad and his friend Jason and it took him exactly one year to restore it and it's been on the road since I believe New Year's Day 2010 and what a stunning car it is I mean look at it it looks better than the day it left the showroom it's absolutely incredible and I mean it's got all the original details to it it's truly astonishing and apparently that fate wood uh, trim on the side is very difficult to get now let me show you some of the other minis that are on display there's some incredible cars here some earlier minis some later minis but essentially they're all here for one reason only which is to celebrate 60 years of the mini and of course to come and see the racing as well so i thought i'd give you a little bit of a view of what these look like because the thing is with minis is people tend to do a lot with them they're quite easy to customize and um, it's a great it's a great classic to get into if you can afford one because they've got the hundred percent parts availability and this here is a mini moke if you've not seen one before if you watch my earlier video that I put up I think it was earlier this month from mini and Metro day there's a bit about mini mokes in there now we're going to come along because we've got a special mini on display but I'm trying to try not leave any of the minis out because I want to show you all of them because some of these people have traveled very far and um, here's a little rogue intruder and again just a bit of customized but I mean it's great here because everybody's welcome on display customized standard um, and all the things in between so I'm just going to skip across show you one of the other minis um, I can't believe how many are here today but um, I suppose that's testament to the mini really it's because it is such a valuable classic there are so many of them left um, and so many of them in good condition as well. But yes, just have a look under this bonnet. But as you can see, there's a lot going on. Um, there's not really too many that are standard here. Um, but there's just a lot going on really. So we're going to, going to cut down this queue quite quickly. But as I said, I just want to give you a bit of visibility of all the minis. This is a little bit more standard because you've got your A-Series engine and um, just pootle along here. There's a really special mini I want to show you. Um, is something that I didn't expect to see here today and it's 10 NOB and it's an ex John Rhodes racing mini from the 60s it won a lot of races and it's recently been restored and I believe it now races at Goodwood now John Rhodes was um, a racing car driver and his nickname was smoking Rhodes because he used to smoke the tires in the corner so I'm just going to show you around this car because this is one of the great things about occasions like this and shows like this is people tend to bring out cars that you don't see anywhere else it's great let's go and have a look at some of the other stuff for those of you who don't recognize this car maybe because you're watching from America or further away um, this is a Renault 12 now where we are they used to be everywhere and of course on mainland Europe also prevalent but now it's a car that you rarely see so it was a real pleasure to come here today and see that the Renault Owners Club have brought some really good examples including this particular Renault 12 which I've absolutely fallen in love with now where did it sit in the market so it was a French mid-sized family car and was launched in 1969 and it was made all the way through to 1980 in Western Europe and then further afield in kind of Eastern Europe and further away it was made 
by different manufacturers. So it's a design that's been really popular and um, highly regarded through the last century and into the early part of the century, this century as well. Now, you could have either had a saloon or an estate and it was highly regarded in Europe for its styling, its performance and perhaps most importantly in those sketchy petrol crisis years of the 1970s, the low fuel consumption too. The car sold 2.5 million units worldwide and it's not hard to see why because this is a stunning car which deserves all the attention that it's getting today and in my opinion a truly outstanding classic. Now let me show you some of the other cars that are here today. Now this is very interesting because this is a car made by Gilburn so instead of telling you all about this car I'm going to tell you about the manufacturer because I didn't know too much about Gilburn um, and you may not either so I thought I would fill you in and um, maybe tell you something that you didn't already know. So Gilburn Sports Cars was founded by a butcher named Giles Smith and a German engineer um, who'd been a prisoner of war and stayed in Wales named Bernard Frisch which I may be pronouncing incorrectly. Now Bernard had experience in fiberglass moulding and they worked together, they combined their names and came up with the name Gilburn, which actually was one of the few car manufacturers um, which made cars in Wales, probably hence all the uh, Welsh stickers on this car. Now the business was based in South Wales in Pontypridd and when they began they were in an outhouse at the back of the butchers and once they started full production they moved to the nearby location of, and um, I'm going to put my Welsh GC to good use here, Llanwit uh, Vedra, Vedra. And to begin with, the cars were available as kit cars, and later on, they were available as complete cars to buy. Now, an interesting fact about Gilburn is that the early cars were based around the Austin A35 mechanical components. And uh, seeing as we're uh, seeing as we're at Alton Park today, I will give you a fun motorsport fact. Gilburn's have had an almost continuous history in competition from their inception to present day, which makes it quite fitting, actually that this unassuming little car is parked here all on her own and um, sadly due to costs and all sorts of other reasons production ended in 73. Now it's not just 60 years since the Mini was launched this year it's also 60 years since the Ford Anglia 105e was launched and um, it's probably one of my favourite cars purely because my best friend Joe has one and I love going on adventures in it as sad as that sounds. Now if you're a big Harry Potter fan you'll have seen one of these before this is what they had it was a flying car um, but this one looks a little bit saucier than uh, the one featured in Harry Potter so there's a lot of different modifications that you can do with the Anglia um, a lot of people do modify them actually in fact so much so that there's actually a different club for purists that keep them as they are and um, for people that like to modify them again it's one of those cars that's quite versatile you see a lot of them but prices are going up like just they're just crazy anyway um, I thought I'd give you a quick spin around the Anglias um, before we go and have a look at some of the other cars the fun car spotting continues with this Honda S800. Now, this is a car that I've never seen in the flesh, so I'm both excited to show you and to uh, have a look myself. Now, this amazing sporty little car was introduced at the 1965 to Tokyo Motor Show and was introduced to compete with things like the Austin Healey Sprite, the MG Midget, the Triumph Spitfire and the Fiat 850 Spider. Now, it was made and assembled in Japan and sold between 1966 and 1967. However, it wasn't available in the UK until 1967. And they priced it up and it was cheaper than a Mini Cooper and a Triumph Spitfire, making it slightly more affordable for somebody who wanted something like a sports car but maybe couldn't get their budget to stretch all the way up. Now, America's regulations were very different to ours um, and to the rest of the world on emissions and other things like that in the 60s and Honda struggled to keep up with this and basically couldn't get this car to meet the standards and then without the American market support Honda seized production of this car in um May 1970 and can you believe a total well I was surprised actually I thought it'd be more um, around 11 and a half thousand of these cars were produced between 66 and 1970 and I can honestly say that um, this is probably one of my favorite cars I've spotted today I just absolutely love the styling of it and think it looks jolly good fun it's not just adults getting in on the action either I spotted this young man driving something uh, very classically styled across the site great job love it 
now we've had a look at the cars, we're going to walk back to Mike at the pit and see how him and the Anglia got on in the race. Hi, I'm Michael Sheridan. This is my Ford Anglia race car. It's uh, 1500 and I race it in the 366 touring cars. I got into racing when I was 18 years old. Uh, my dad raced back in the 80s in similar cars like four Cortinas um, and just carried on from there really. I uh, had a really good day's racing. Um, the first race had a few issues, didn't have second gear. Um, I still had a good battle with the cars about me. The second race was a really good race. Um, lots of cars around, uh, really close battles. Um, unfortunately there's a big smash between a Mini and a Mustang. Um, sort of showing how dangerous it can be and how, how risky it is taking out these old classic cars. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, nice clean car and good result. Now it's time for me to head home because the races are pretty much finished, um, all the classic cars are leaving and um, we've got to be up for work after bank holiday tomorrow and um, yep, pretty gutted about that one. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it and um, if you've been on a fence about coming to something like this before, I hope I've managed to twist your arm and convince you it's a great day out and it really was worth every penny of the £25 entry. Now, I'm going to head off home so all I've left to say is, is take care and drive safely.